established that the, the coherency of a belief in a divine creator, we then look at the possibility that does it make sense that this creator that we've spoken about creates us purposelessly, meaning for no reason whatsoever. It's akin to saying that, for example, we as theists believe that God will judge us after we have deceased and he will raise us up again. It makes no sense, however, that he would create us for no reason and simply say, all right, get on with it. I'll judge you in a few year, thousand years. Mind you, I won't send you any guidance. I won't tell you how to lead your life. I'll simply judge you and I'll sort you out <laughs> in the hereafter. That makes no sense. It makes more prevalent sense that he sends a form of guidance to you in which one leads one's life. Now, for this mobile phone, for example, a common analogy which our views are familiar with, in which, just say 50 years ago, I was to tell you, I was hand this device over too gently, and I was to say to you, you can speak from one end of the world to the other using this device. No one's ever seen it before. If I gave it to you, what is the first thing you'd expect to operate the device? Well, like magic. Pardon? Like magic or something which you, no, would, you, you understand. Yeah, so you'd expect a manual, an instruction sheet oh, on yeah, how yeah. to operate the device. Yeah. So that would be done via the proxy of information, instruction sheet. So what we say as the analogy is that God sends us revelation in terms of guidance upon how he wants us to live a life. It makes perfect sense because it doesn't make sense, you see, that if he, he, he created us for no purpose whatsoever, not defining to us how he expects to lead our lives. Now you've got the Christian faith, which you have a background from, with parent, uh, parentally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah parentally. Yeah. Into, born into. You see, lot with due respect to Christians, a lot of the Christian the understanding of the Christian faith in itself is somewhat paradoxical. I'm not just like highlighting that faith. In a sense, it makes creation akin to the Creator. So they would make someone like Jesus as God. Where yeah, he, yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, where he makes no sense whatsoever. Because man, by very nature, is limited. It doesn't make sense a limitless being can act as a man. This is, this is where I kind of go from as well. It's kind of like, so for every translation that we have of this interpretation of God that's come from some form of human that would like. I know obviously it would be the yeah. yes. for the Muslim faith. Yes. But like, for me, I haven't seen, so say for Jesus, everyone in Christianity believes he's the person who is the word of God. Word yeah. Of God. yeah. But like, that was another thing. I was kind of like, he's probably some guy who lived 2,000 years ago, had a following, and he's created another of movement that exists today. So why should I define that for that? And I feel the same about Islam to some degree. And like, of course, I respect people who yeah, no, of course. believe in it. But for me, it's like, that's not. But there is a, quite a substantive difference. Okay. Shall I tell you what the difference is? You're going to find this compelling, I'm sure. Whereas the prophets, like made mention of Moses, mm. Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them, they all came with divinely guided revelation. And the whole singular task was as chosen individuals to bring man to worshipping God and God. So they're going to strangle me to death one day. So, um, uh, so um, to bring God, bring people to worshipping God and God alone. Those transgressing communities are who are transgressed. So essentially speaking, where we see in the New Testament, for example, where Jesus came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, because those were people who had transgressed, God sends Jesus to bring them back to worshipping Him and Him alone. This is a consistent message. This happened at the time of Moses, who were with the children of Israel, were entrapped. God sends Moses and they're freed from bondage. The Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace, came to a, a pagan Arab community who were barbaric to the extreme, to the extent where a, a, a young female would be born, she would be buried alive, simply for being buried, born as a female. So he came into this barbaric um, society and he changed things upside down and brought the, a law which he claimed to be from God in order for mankind to live in accordance with how God wants us to live. So, and note one thing here, which is what the compelling factor which I made mention. That which is that they didn't, none of them are claimed to be God. They are rather select chosen people who made a big change in the world as, as, as representatives of the Creator, especially chosen individuals. That's all they were, but not akin to being God. This is where Islam differs, you see. Its major protagonist, the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace, God's final messenger to mankind, no Muslim on the face of the earth makes the claim that he is God. Rather, they simply say he's a messenger. See, this is consistent with the other messages as well. Summarily, however, where Christianity went off on a, um, on a rather strange paradox, but was about associating the rights of God and giving them to Christ, and making him God, despite the fact he makes no such claim of being God.
yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's why I think it's Jesus that kind of went off the bat for me, because that's kind of like, he's a human, like, probably anyone else. Yeah, that, that, that could reform us, like you mentioned, mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. a person who came to the community, you know, um, did excellent acts, got great following, and is an example to mankind. This yeah, is what the prophet, yeah. Fantastic. So, did you know, you sound like from we've gone from agnosticism into you accepting there's some sort of centrality in the understanding of good reason to believe in a creator and now you've understood how we differ in terms of our understanding of a creator who's unlike his creation it's far beyond the, it, it resonates well with our initial conversation of there being a creator due to the points that we raised so islam is very simple and very straightforward it makes the most sense it resonates with individuals so then what we understand by there being that singular creator he's given us a guide on how to live our mankind he's the sole objective um, decider on what is construed as how one should lead out one's life according to societal trends no we don't adapt to societal trends that which conflict with the fu fundamental tenets of religion because society can change according to the volition of the society at that particular time yeah, you yeah. see subjective. so subjective precisely so we believe in something which is totally objective and that can only come from as a, a general morality that can only come from a creator because society as we made mention is subject to its subjective um, influences around it so hence it makes perfect sense then he's created us for a purpose he wants us to live a life according to his will to acknowledge him you've got two lovely eyes if i was off of you 50 million quid for both of them and you'd be blind for the remain, remainder of your days would you take it not a chance not on your nelly as they say so what would you do <laughs> what would you do you would um, you know you he's given to you for free you know that which you did not have is the air that we breathe for free so he's worth that he's worth our adulation our you're, it's a hot day today we're going to get home we will probably sit down have a nice cold drink chill out you know yeah, he, yeah. He's, he's the provider of everything to us yeah. the, the drink that we, the, the the first which will be quenched so hence it makes sense that we should show gratitude to that yeah. if i if you were ever in trouble you Fortune came over to, yeah yeah, you yeah. Well. precisely yeah. if you if you were ever in trouble in your life and you you know you've got a friend and that friend gives you lots of money you're not going to go around thanking um you know your uh, I don't know, grade eight uh, friend that you once knew you're going to go and thank that guy directly who helped you but what about the one who's given you everything that that you yeah, may yeah. think i'm appearing to sentiment or reasoning but it is reasonable you see you'll get all this for free of charge 100%. I, okay so I, I feel so being grateful for having life in general well how that life has come about we don't we can't understand what that but having it in general you should be grateful for that and i think yeah. like, you know, all those things you should be you know and for some supernatural being lack of a better word to create it i believe it if that makes sense excellent where it goes from so you have supernatural creator outside the universe god so to speak I love what I then goes to whoever whichever religion has interpreted their interpretation of christianity i mean they said it was christ and you know yeah yeah but let's say the old testament say Jew, yes and they have their own beliefs say other you know all the way down to like a tribal level they they can't understand the thing and they believe in the supernatural being or whatever like that's that translation there is where i get lost because i believe that the thing exists okay fantastic now there's a, we're going to come to a little interesting little uh, conclusion why is it you know what? Now this is gonna this this question you've asked singularly, I'm gonna hope to address in a way which will satisfy you in totality. Listen carefully. What's your name? Sorry, can you me ask your name? Ben, my Mustafa. Delighted to meet you, Ben. Ben. So very very briefly, why Islam? There's a verse in the Quran. Allah says, addressing the Muslims to the people in general. Let's come to a common terms as between us, the Muslims, and you all of mankind, the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians in particular, yeah. that we worship none than the one true God, the very God that Moses worshipped, the very God that Jesus worshipped. Once we get to a centrality that is one, un that is one being who is unlike his creation, the one supreme God, the very issues that we have in our life will, or our differences that we have as human beings will dissolve away for the nominal reason, just say polytheistic faith like Hinduism or whatever other, other yeah, religion, yeah, but, even they believe centrally in one God. They don't actually believe in many entities of God. It's what happens is the third party narratives of not just Hinduism, but also Christianity, which give the illusion 
that the major protagonist, so in the case of Christians, Christ yeah, yeah, yeah. would be seen as a god, or in the case of the um, Hindus, someone like Vishnu or Ganesh or Ram, they would be deemed as god. However, of significant interest, Ben, these individuals, they never made such claims. The third party narrative of these particular books, which were written by a multiplicity of different authors, they make their claims based upon what they understand. It's not a coherent singular message, whereas the Quran claims to be the only scripture on the face of the earth which is the direct verbatim word of God from cover to cover whereas the, just say the New Testament as you're more familiar with that that's written by a whole multiplicity of different authors even John's gospel the last of the four gospels it's not just written by John it is written by several I don't know let's put it on my nose <laughs> on the beat on my peak if you want so um so Okay, so basically speaking, well, it makes me look trimmer, slimmer, I suppose. So, um, in effect, um, what we're learning singularly that Islam, its singular source is God. Throughout, you can, when you read the Quran, which I will give you a copy if you would like, so if you'd like to have one, free of charge, in which, singularly speaking, not the third party narratives of all the other world's faiths. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So I Does that make do you understand? That, so, that it, so how did that, 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 that aligns well with all the world's faith? And then God says in the Quran, today, I have completed my favour upon to you and chosen for you Islam as a means for you to live. It's not, so it's not just unilaterally a religion, it's ubiquitous to all of mankind, the very essence of our day-to-day -day existence from the time we wake up in the morning to the time we sleep. Every action is invoked within the religion. So it's got its set manifestations of prayer and, and by five times a prayer, doing certain ritual, ritualistic acts. But it also worship can be involved, like me smiling at you if you're in trouble or clearing, clearing a path if, you're, or if you need clearance or help. This is a worship as well, of certain magnitude, if you see what I mean, in addition to the required worship as well, the requisite worship. So what we observe here centrally, Ben, is that it's a uni full, full way, we pray five times a day. Did you know, which Christians don't know, which is quite, you know, it's, it's upsetting in, 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 the, in the age of technology, that even the prophets in the Old Testament used to pray like we do, by bowing and prostrating to God. Moses did that. Proper. It's mentioned in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 4 and 6, that they bowed and then they kneeled in prostration to God, exactly like we do. Before they even offered their prayers, they washed their hands, finished, Moses washes his hands, finishes by washing his feet before offering congregational prayers, which is exactly what we do. So Islam claims to be the completion of God's law to mankind. Having God having revealed the Old Testament to Moses, not that which is in his current form, yeah, yeah. but and the New Testament to Jesus, not that which is in his current form. For I, they got Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, according to blah blah blah. Yeah. So what we're observing here, Ben, let me tell you as, as a final point: Islam, why Islam? It's a full way of living your life. The relationship you have with God five times a day by praying. The other factors you have to give 2.5 percent of your gross savings yearly to the to the poor and needy. You must once in your lifetime, any time of your life perform the annual pilgrimage to Mecca, which is currently taking place. Then you give, then once in um, a year, you do the fasting, as you're familiar with the fasting, so that you can better yourself internally and also understand what God has given you to those that do not have. And the, and the, and the final uh, uh, pillar, which now escapes me from, is to testify there's only one God, and God sends messengers, of which the final prophet is the prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace. He sends his final revelation, which is the Quran, as a means for you, us to lead our lives in conjunction with his will. Because when we are presented to him, as I've given you the message of his central, of the one, oneness of God, worshipping God and God alone, that is the prerequisite to how our Creator wants us to live. And it beautifully, in tandem, goes with the points that we've discussed. From, a, from the possibility of a Creator, to the essential understanding of a Creator, furthermore to a, a understanding of how a Creator wants us to live, or all adds up to all these questions which are in the mind, is beautifully predisposed within the Islamic narrative. Makes yeah, sense? That makes sense. That makes Fantastic, sense. Ben. I started going from the tangent. This is Islam in a nutshell. Many people are becoming Muslims of all different backgrounds, of all different ethnicities. We've got people there of Afro-Caribbean background. We've got that gentleman who's just beyond these gentlemen, speaking to that other chap, Englishman, become Muslim. It's ubiquitous, it's widespread. We do this work quite a lot. People are coming, drawing towards a religion because it's a way of life. We don't drink alcohol. Why do you think we don't drink alcohol? Because of the destruction it causes. NHS, billions of pounds worth of um, expenses every year, what happens? To the extent that even the drinking a litre alcohol in recent studies has been shown to be detrimental to the health. Even a minuscule amount, which was previously thought to have been some sort of health benefit, like a bit of brandy, you know, topping up a bit of brandy, if you've got a little, that's even nonsense as well. So the issue here, centrally speaking, is that what God has reject, rejected, 
uh, we, we, we uh, obey and we, we, we don't go down to that method. But God is not a suppressor. He wants us to enjoy our lives as well. He wants us to be the best people we can. Angelic in the way we predispose our affairs, but he knows we're limited. So we don't have this strange concept that if we err in sin, that it requires someone to come down for the sins of mankind and die by spreading his blood. No, no, no. If you err, if you, err you make error, you simply ask God, oh God, forgive me. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. God forgive. And God is most merciful. He knows he's created us weak. He knows we're going to be prone to error. He doesn't expect us to be perfectionists, but he does expect us that if we do something wrong, come and repent to him and make a determination not to go to that extent again. Would the Quran ever, not Quran, but like a Muslim practice in general, would that ever evolve as time went on? So say, you know, like, it was 1,500 odd years ago? Yeah, when roughly, happened. yes. Yeah. And then say a thousand years time, ten thousand years time, a hundred thousand years time, like it's got, society's going to look extremely different to, you know, the gap between them and now is huge, let alone a yeah. hundred oh, yeah. oh yeah. How would it adapt or would it do it adhere to the same principles? Yeah, I mean, because the essential same principles will remain as we've just discussed. The, the importance of, I mean, I can't see any time in the near future that the scientists are going to crack, yeah, crack the code where, oh now we get it, the universe came from, that's not going to happen. Yeah? Okay. Because, because it's very dealing, science can only observe the empirical, it, observable. It can't go beyond into the metaphysical, which is what the universe came from, that singular source, when the gases were compressed into a singularity and then it went forth in, in the form of the energy which came forth. So what we say hence is that our responsibility is to our Creator uh, alone. We're going to die one day. Those who mock that God can recreate us and judge us don't realize that the fact that we're here in itself is a miracle. Yeah. So, you know, it's not beyond the scopes that he can reconvene us and make judge us for our actions. And like I said, we would always have an excuse a day of judgment. Oh God, you never told us nothing about yourself or you never sent us any guidance. How are we supposed to acknowledge you? But then you have the scriptures which tell you that, for example, I've given you a message, Ben. It's resonated with you. If there are any uncertainties you may have on what I've said or any disagreement, you need to tell me. But it appears to me you've accepted a lot of what I've said. Hence, it's incumbent upon you now to reflect on it. It's not simply get, on, get along with the monotony of life because our life will, con will continue in that merry path, you see. And one day we are not going to be here. 50 years ago you weren't here and it's very unlikely in another 150 years you will be here either. So the, sus the sustainer in the meantime is that creator who has set everything in motion in a particular way. Does that appeal to you what I said? Yeah, that, that does. Yeah. That does. You know, in practice, if you believe what I've said to you, there's only one God, which we've gone from that, and then God sends messengers, of which the God, as I made Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them. If you believe in that understanding, in effect, you're a Muslim. It's ridiculously simple. I know it's, it's and that's the first thing I do. I see people smiling or finding it preposterously easy, but that's the case. If you believe, if I've somehow given you a narrative which you find reasonably, um, um, accept, you know, something you can accept, by proxy, that makes you a Muslim. Ridiculously easy. Of course. I, I get these to reflect before I fully convert. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to reflect. But is there anything in your mind which would lead you to uncertainty? Ask me. If you've got anything. Because I think I've, try, I've, I've tried reasonably to break everything down to you. Yeah, yeah. It makes, yeah. Sense, it makes, makes sense. sense. I would invite you to accept to become Muslim. It's very straightforward. If you need someone else to speak to you further about their experiences of becoming a Muslim, I can do that in instantly and get someone to speak to you. Become Muslim, Ben. Is there a contact information? Um, I can give you my contact number. No, that's not the one, that's something else. That's just some general information or general leaflets that I distribute. I can give you my number if you so wish. Right. Or if you want to speak to someone, I can get someone to speak to you. A, re a reverse perspective. Would you like that maybe? Oh, nice guy. Oh, you need to make a dash. All right, if you, if you just drop, well, um, tell you what, type my number in here. Give me a missed call so then the whole world doesn't know about me and it inundates me with fan, fan mail. Oh, yeah. Okay, just whip your number in there and I will, um, uh, that you, that, that, then my number will come up. Give it a call, that's it. Do give me a call, Ben, yeah? I'm not too far, I don't live too far from here. So, you know, I've got a motor, I can whip down, we can have a little discussion. Perfect. Can I give you a Quran in English before I go? Just because I promised I would. A Quran in English. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much.